my ear. Howdy. You all have to know who this is if you don't. No, She's don't. our former LCO mm -hmm. for higher education. Hello. And um, we are working on several products of, of yours, your labors. I want people on this committee know, to know that the strategic plan bill that we're working on was the work of my year. Yes. And um, actually, did you work on this bill too when you were here, the yes. in state? You did. See? It was already uh, in drafted and had been. Well, we up. miss you. Where are you? Well, I will. You're going to tell my, us? Yes. <laughs> You and coming I back? Guys, I'm a little nervous. Um, You're nervous. A little bit. You know us all so well. How could you be nervous? Public. <laughs> um, good afternoon. You actually, know a lot more about us. Than <laughs> but anyway, go on. Um, my name is Mayer Nigugogor, and I'm here today to support uh, House Bill 6390. Um, I feel very fortunate to be here today in support of this bill because three years ago, when this bill was before the committee, I was the LCO attorney. I was unable to testify at that time, and I now work as an immigration attorney in Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> my parents are immigrants who entered the U.S. legally. My father was a highlight player and entered the U.S. with my mother and sister on temporary visas. Although they entered legally, at some point after my brother and I were born, my father had problems renewing his visa. We were all supposed to leave the country. I was in fourth grade when this happened. My sister, who became illegal, was in middle school. When children of illegal immigrants say they feel American, it is because for most of them this country is all they know and this is the place they call home. I remember as a child praying to God not to deport my family. I remember visiting the offices of immigration lawyers and hearing my parents discuss ways they would be able to stay. My parents and sister eventually received their green cards when I hear arguments against providing in-state tuition to children of undocumented immigrants, I'm extremely saddened by the lack of compassion and empathy. It reminds me that the barrier is still in place that prevents people like me from entering. There's so much anger in some of the comments that I've read online and on blogs sometimes. The message is clear. You are not wanted. Go back to where you came from. You don't belong here. People who are born here deserve help, not illegals. Well, I was born here, my sister wasn't, so I deserve my education and she didn't. Or maybe I too shouldn't have been given the opportunity to pursue higher education either. This bill is about providing deserving, high achieving students an opportunity to pursue higher education. Children of undocumented immigrants are not eligible for financial aid, therefore their chance of pursuing higher education is very slim. This, will, this bill would provide them with that chance. It's not about giving them a free ride or break. There are more obstacles than tuition facing children of immigrant families. I can't speak for other families, only my own, but I can tell you from personal experience that I'm extremely fortunate to be where I am today. Um, I was able to go to college. I supported myself through school. Uh, while my classmates were at parties, I was waiting tables. Um, and I also envied a lot of my classmates who had parents that were involved and were supportive when I always felt I was on my own and struggling internally with even whether I belonged in school. Um, and lastly, I kind of want to end this with saying that I'll never forget the day that I graduated law school. My father hugged me and held on to me for what felt like hours. Tears were bursting from his eyes and he was overwhelmed with joy. For my parents, my achievement meant everything. My parents have had a hard life as immigrants in this country, and they still struggle to this day. Nothing has ever been free in their life. When I hear comments people make about undocumented immigrants and their children, it breaks my heart. Um, these are people just like you and me, people with families who want to provide for their children and see their children succeed. My childhood and my immigrant family experience has made me who I am today. I chose law as a profession because I wanted to help others. I chose to live in Connecticut because this is my home. Without higher education, I would most likely be waiting tables today and not pay paying nearly as much in taxes. I strongly support this bill, which will provide students the opportunity to pursue higher education and fulfill their dreams. Sorry for going over the time. That's Thank all right. You. We give a special dispensation for former LCOs, especially those 
especially those that make us look good here. And you surely, uh, while you were here, made us look good. So, Thank you. and your work continues. So, um, I'm sure that's good to hear. But I, I'm amazed that you worked on that bill, and all was going all through that. And we, you know, what a professional you are. I, mean, I had no idea um, that you could relate to, in a very detached way to uh, something that you were uh, working on and had feelings about. Yeah, that, well, I think that's why I am. Objectivity. Much You're really incredible objectivity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I took my role seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but I am definitely in a better place, I think, in the job that I'm doing. And well, I don't know about if I feel that way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, again, it was great to have you here today. I want questions, or somebody may have questions about actually the bill, since my ear helped to uh, was part of all the discussions we had when we framed it. No, yes. Welcome back to the committee. Thank you. Um, my question is: There's been a lot of discussion today about federal immigration rules, and we should wait to fix this federally. Um, I've heard that on other issues in this chamber myself and opted to advocate for, for state law first. Um, tell us where you think we are with federal immigration law and how close we are to having a real path to citizenship for children and families who are here currently in an undocumented way. I mean, I think that's an excellent question, but it's Washington and people are afraid and don't have the courage to do it. And it's very impo unpopular, as you guys know. Um, I think it's going to eventually happen. We have to do something. And the thing is, when that happens, a lot of the you know, students that are here today that it's going to affect, you know, now is the time where they're entering the schools. We need to help them now, not down the road when it's too late. You know, um, My sister couldn't go to school because she wasn't eligible. I was lucky. I was born here. You know, um, I could get financial aid. Um, so, so how long do you think we'll wait? I mean, if you had, if you were guessing, do you think that within the next five years, as a country, we'll have a way, an, a, a path to citizenship um, that's navigable for the majority of undocumented residents who are here? I would hope so. I, I can't really say when that will happen. And, and when, when the willpower is there, when more people support this issue, when there's, you know, when you can. Well, it seems like you work in the thicket every day trying to help families um, become legal residents. Is that accurate? You said you work in immigration, or which, what's your role yes. there? We do business immigration, so there's a lot of different areas of immigration. But yes, I do work on getting green cards, people, the pathway to get legal. And, and how much would you say the average client has to pay to find their way to that path to citizenship? Is it something that you need to have a lot of resources to, thousands, to come? Thousands of dollars to pay. But I mean, undocumented people right now are, are stuck because if you've been illegal for a certain amount of time, there isn't a way for you to adjust your status. There was provisions in the law previously that had expired and sunsetted, so now they have to wait for something to happen from Congress to allow them to. Okay, well, well based on what you're saying. I mean, people can find, you know, um, sponsorship through employment and family relationships, but the staying, the being illegal for a certain amount of time in the country precludes them from being able to adjust status. So even, you know, if you had a sponsor or a job and stuff, you would still face a wall. So it's not like we're on the 90 yard line. As I, as I hear you talk, it seems like there's a way we have to go. Uh, for families to be able to achieve citizenship who are here in the state and whose children are well, here in the state. Well, it depends, too. Like the other speaker who is here, you know, there was a time when, like, and even in my family, where you're in a limbo stage. Every person's different. You know, some people may already have something going, but, you know, it's stuck. Or they are, you know, don't have um, legalization yet. And those people will suffer. You know, eventually they will. And I think eventually everyone who's undocumented will find a way, too. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Representative Rivero. Have, have you ever heard the song, Do It My Way? Cause I. Because I, I think they should uh, write a song about you, and it says, uh, 
I enjoy it more. I did it the hard way. Con congratulations. I think you did one heck of a job. And Thank you. Uh, you're a real example for what we should all do in this country. Thank, thank you, you very much. Any other? Well, thank you for coming today and coming back to this committee. We're always happy to have former LCOs here. Thank you very much. Um,